This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Billy Robinson. He is the chairman and CEO of Renovadio Inc., publicly traded company. The symbol is RIII on the OTCQB. Billy, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Great, man. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you joining me today. So this is actually our first time doing an interview together. So as is tradition here, uh, can you provide us with a quick overview and history of the company, and then we'll go from there? Sure. So uh, originally the company was called Success Entertainment. I or a group of us. We acquired control uh, in April of last year and restructured the company to focus on the infrastructure business. It was in the entertainment promotion business before we sold off all of the non-performing assets, which were primarily overseas subsidiaries, and then uh, put together uh, several acquisitions that was in the infrastructure space. The, um, the, the business model is to acquire companies that are in um, either the uh, utility management business, this would be managing water and sewer plants, um, utility or underground construction, which would be water, sewer, gas, uh, fiber optic, and then to also, because of in the, in the utility management side, ISPs are basically the same client base. You know, if you're if you're buying water and gas, you're also buying your, your Wi-Fi from primarily the same people. So because we already have the management system and structure in place, we have started focusing on looking for opportunities to acquire both existing systems that are out there. And then once the Biden bill finally gets approved, there's a lot of money that will be allocated in the ISP arena. So we're going to try to expand in the fiber optic 5G area as well. Very good. All right. So I, t- tell me, what's been what, what's been the main focus right now? You know, what, what are some of the companies or, or acquisitions that you've done thus far that's that's been driving the company? Well, we've you know, we, we prim- primarily had three revenue models. The first acquisition was uh, Utility Management Corp, and it had two subsidiaries, Utility Management Construction and Crossbow Construction. Utility Management is a they've been around since 1962. They have about 12 what I would call cities, water, rural water districts or or type co-ops, which encompass um, a large rural area of northeast Oklahoma and and southeast, excuse me, yeah, southeast Kansas. Um, Crossbow Construction, again, is probably uh, at least a seven-year-old company, and they have focused in uh, water line installation, sewer line installation, and have recently we've started moving towards get, put, putting them into the fiber optic space. So those are, the, those are the operating companies that we've acquired. We also did a vertical move like many co- small companies did during COVID. And we went after medical infrastructure pro- pro- products. We sold masks and we sold gloves and we've been somewhat successful at that. And we are working on some logistics contracts that could turn into some long-term revenue, but that's not our focus. That was really, why COVID shut down all of the municipalities, our construction business just stopped. Yeah, there's not, I, I mean, there's nothing getting built. Like, yeah, I mean, so you tell me, to, yeah. to continue to have revenue and to uh, substantiate the growth of the company, you know, we vertically moved into the, uh, to the PPE side, really just, fo- we focused on gowns, gloves, and masks. And we still have some gown project, excuse me, some mask projects that we're working on not mask, we still have some glove projects that we're working on that could turn into like more of we're, we're managing the logistics. We've got a re- relationship with the factory directly. That product will be purchased from the factory and then delivered directly to the end user. And we're just going to act kind of as the logistics facilitator. And there's some nice revenue that can pass through and some profits that we can pick up in that transaction. But again, hopefully that'll be more on an auto mode and then we're gonna focus on acquisitions. We've targeted several that are in the footprint of where we're at and our footprint basically is from east, uh, from Western Missouri, Northern Oklahoma, Northeast and, and, and really the whole Northern part of the state, uh, Southern Kansas, Southern Colorado, uh, Eastern New Mexico and Northern Texas. It's like a big arch that sweeps through there and it's all rural. And there's probably in that rural arch there you know, a couple of million people. And there's numerous of what I would call these small mom and pop utility management companies, both for the underground utilities and then in the, in the ISP 5G Wi-Fi opportunity as well. 
So we've already started reaching out to those and, you know, hopefully before the end of the year, you know, we've got a couple of those under our belt that we've also acquired along with the ones we've already got in place. I was just going to ask you that. I'm really happy that you brought that up because, you know, you brought up the infrastructure bill, you know, it's still in process, you know, so I, I got to ask, you know, how will that infrastructure bill affect Renovatio? I know that seems like an obvious question, but I might as well ask it. And then, and then, and then secondly to that, you know, these mom and pops are seeing that same bill coming down the road. So they're thinking themselves, okay, that means potentially more business for us as well. You know, so what's, what's been the value add that you've been selling them on potentially, you know, wanting to bring them within the Renovatio family? Well, it, it's kind of unique that a lot of the higher percentage of these mom and pops have been around for a long time. And it's just been, this has been kind of a better than average income stream for them. You know, they have all their family working at it or friends. And so it's been more of a convenience business than something that they look to grow. They, they, they kind of hit the wall. They, you know, to go to that next level, they're going to have to raise capital, go into debt, do things that they're not comfortable doing. And in most cases, a lot of the cases, the owners are, are old. They're, you know, they're older, much older than I am. And um, they're looking for an exit strategy. They, they know the opportunities there. But, you know, there's a lot of details that go into getting government money. You know, it comes in as an initial loan, can, turns into a grant if you meet certain criteria. And, and that takes time. You know, usually they're two to three year programs. And they're just like, if we can get some cash in our pocket today, we understand what you're doing and we see opportunity in taking stock as part of that transactional cost. And then we want to help you grow. So we'll stick around long enough to train you on what we do make our employees comfortable with you and then allow you to bring in somebody that we mentor to take over our position. So, so our model is really, it's kind of a, kind of a multi-step model. We try to buy at five to seven times EBITDA, very seldom on the high side, unless it's an asset rich try, try, uh, kind of acquisition. Uh, we'd like the management to sign a minimum of a one year, but usually a three-year contract to give us time to get acclimated to their business model, their clients to get used to us, their employees not to, you know, walk on us and to be sure that the business that we buy is the business that we keep. And, um, you know, and with that, there seems to be a great amount of, a great amount of interest from, um, you know, a great amount of interest from our, from our, from our, you know, these acquisitions we targeted to go forward and do this. So, um, you know, so that's kind of the model. And uh, we have, right now, we've got several that we've been talking to. We've got a couple that we're getting serious with. We have just recently, um, you know, brought on, you know, a banking group to help us in planning the future growth of the company, both in acquisitions, you know, and also with the potential of, of ultimately get, getting up this. So, so anyway, that's, that's kind, of, kind of where we're at, where we're at right now. Very good. Look, I mean, hey, look, you're a busy guy. Everyone's trying to get a hold of you to get to, to nail some of these deals down, you know? So, uh, so B Billy, uh, one, one other question I got for you, you know, um, where, what's your background? I mean, how, how'd you get into all this? Well, I mean, I've, I've been a deal guy my whole life. I started off uh, in the eighties as a retail broker, uh, worked for a Midwestern firm um, around the beginning of 1990. I went to work for Payne Weber and, uh, uh, was imp implemented a uh, kind of a um, unique division there. We went around the country raising capital with countries or companies that were doing big downsizings, and we would, you know, do the retirement do the retirement plan for them. You know, we would uh, structure, uh, you know, where they could put their money, and then in turn, a lot of times we got them as clients. Then uh, around '95, uh, there was kind of a change in the management at Payne Weber and started, just got interested in doing deals. And so since then I've done um, multiple reverse mergers with public companies, both a few that I was personally involved in and, and many that I was just engaged as a consultant to put together. Uh, this particular opportunity came about kinda, kinda out of COVID. You know, there was a, a lot of construction work that was going on prior to COVID in my neighborhood. And I ended up becoming, you know, friends with the company that was doing the work. And we got to talking about the future and we started talking about opportunities. And one thing led to another. We decided to kind of join forces. We found a public vehicle that we could back into. We cleaned up the cap table and got 
brought capital in to do the structure and started moving forward. But, you know, I've been involved in, you know, probably five or six roll up type scenarios in the past. Uh, did one in the yacht industry, uh, did one in the aerospace industry, and uh, did one in the oil field um, service industry. So, so I've been involved in doing these type of things in the past. And, you know, you make mistakes, you learn from your mistakes and keep trying to make things better the next time around. And we're hoping that this is the last time around. And this is the deal that everybody, you know, finally goes home with and, uh, and rest, you know, rest and retires with. Very good. Well, Billy, with that, where can our audience go and find more information about Renovatio? Um, well, they go to our website, www.renovatio.com. Um, and all of our sub websites with our subsidiaries are listed there. Um, you know, you can go to you know, OTC markets and, uh, you know, click on disclosures. And, you know, we've filed over 108 Ks and filings since we took over in the past year. Uh, we're very transparent in our transactions. We're very transparent in where the company is. And uh, we may be over report what we do, but we don't want anybody to be misinformed. So we try to be stay ahead of the curve and keep all of the uh, public officials happy with how we report things. Very good, as it should be. Well, Billy, with, with that, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck, stay safe. And I look forward to our next update. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. You have a great day. You too.